Gorilla hose reel cart. Simple assembly. Built to work. Designed to work, built to last. Something like that. 250 foot hose reel. Doesn't really designate if that's a 5 eighths or a 3 quarter. I don't know. Picked it up yesterday. Haven't gotten around to opening it. Didn't find much about this online from users. Stuff's kind of thrown in here. That's all right. It's just a hose reel. Not, not worried about how pretty this is going to be. A couple boxes. Hardware, I presume. Wheels. Not in here. All right. Hose reel. Connector hose. Paraphernalia. Product registration. Instructional booklet on how to assemble. It's hot out here. Tires, wheels, something. Blister pack. Picked it up at the Home Depot. Lowe's doesn't carry it, at least not yet. Don't know if they will. So here's what the instructions show. All this hardware and that hardware, tool included. This is what I got. Steps one, three, and four. I'll keep looking, but I don't see these. And you're probably wondering what this is. Heat index 118.8. I got it to measure wind for hurricanes, because we get hurricanes here. That's what we're looking for. It may have said that in the instructions. I don't know. I didn't look. I feel a little better about that. Let's see. Read and understand all instructions before assembly. Okay. So if you get this thing, and you don't see the axles for the wheels, they're probably inside the frame. Take note. It does not explain that in the instructions. It does come with four cotter pins, which will probably rust over time. And there's holes. These are really light. I guess they're aluminum. Uh, this goes on first. And the washer. Maybe you don't need these caps. Otherwise, you don't have enough room to fit the cotter pin. Simple assembly. Cotter pin. I put the cotter pin, push it through the hole from the inside of the cart, just so it's easier to get cotter pin ends bent on the outside. That might be my first modification. I might do a self-improvement on this design. I'm going to bend the short side of the cotter pin towards the ground, so there's less of a chance to catch anything. Okay. There's some grease on the axles. I'll try to give you a view on how these wheels go on. You have the axle with this cap. Remove the cap. Got the washer. Watch out when you pour out that blister pack. This doesn't go flying all over the place. Wheel, axle first, then the washer. Washer's gonna have a rounded side and a flat side. Put the rounded side against the wheel. Got a hole, hole, match up the holes. It would probably be easier to put the cotter pin from this way, this way. I'm making it difficult and going in from the other side. I'm rotating this so the long side is facing up or is on the top side. Long side, top side. These cotter pins can maybe catch. You can see that cotter pin is going to be exposed. I don't like that setup, but that's what we've got. Wheels are on. I don't know if they give you a tool requirement. Tool included. There is a tool included. Lock, unlock. I'm not really sure what that's for pointing underneath. Not sure what the lock and lock is for. We'll figure it out. I need to get adjustable wrench. All right, so this is reverse thread. Twisting to the left, it's going on. Twist it to the right, it's off. I guess which kind of makes sense. I guess you wind this thing up one direction. Pull it out one way, wind up the other. It goes in as such into this deal. There is a uh, there's a hex on the back of the handle that the nut fits into. I guess theoretically you don't need the adjustable wrench, but not everybody's gonna be able to remove that nut by hand. Handle. I still don't know what these locks are for. Oh, I found them. There's a lock on the other the underside of the tray. That's to keep the tray secure. I guess I put this together out of order. Handle. hot. Two nuts of bolts to secure this. 
nuts go on the front side. These are regular thread, standard thread. Also a hex on the front side. So that theoretically all you need is the wrench provided to tighten the hardware. The nut does not stay in on its own. That's okay. The thing doesn't put itself together, does it? I don't see a torque spec. Just have some common sense. You don't need to collapse the tubing. It's got a lock nut. All right. Secure. Step five is hooking up the connector hose on the back side. That is provided. What I'm frustrated with is this is a heavy duty cart and they give us, uh, it might be a half inch hole. I'm using a three quarter inch hose. We'll measure. It's hard to measure this, but it looks like the hole, the path the water actually goes through, looks like it is half inch. So this hose is a half inch that they provide to connect to the faucet. This is the hose I'm using. So you see the difference. I was hoping to get three quarter inch flow through this whole thing, but we're not getting that. I might look into changing this out as well. If I could find hardware, because all the hardware here looks like it's five eighths at best. I'm going to guess that spins independently. Yes. I'm going to presume this is a holder for the attachment hose. If it isn't, that's what it is now. Connect your hose. There's a clamp you have to use. I will attach my hose here and use this clamp to secure it. Assembly guide. Neighbor dogs. I didn't see what that tag said. Do not use aluminum fittings. See manual for more information. Brass, don't use aluminum. Two different metals create electricity between each other and cause corrosion. I guess this is a spare washer. I didn't check to see if there was one in the fitting here. There is. That's also half inch hole for flow. Back side of this has a wing nut. And I'm going with the Gilmore Pro 75 foot 3 quarter inch diameter. Feed the female end of the hose through this hole. This is not run on a spool when you wind it. This is manually, which I think is fine. That's better than using your hand. Let me make sure my hose has a washer. It does. These bigger hoses have round seals. It's not even a washer, it's a seal. I don't know if you can see that. It's not a washer, it's a round O-ring. Alright. Get it secure in this clamp. There's a square that the stud goes through, or bolt, whatever you want to call it. Since there's a wing nut, I guess it's a bolt. You tighten that and wind this thing up. I tried using my hand the first time. No locks on the wheels, that's okay. I think what I'll probably do is stretch this thing out. There's a 75 foot hose all the way down there. This might take some skill to get used to. All right, that's relatively painless. That's 75 feet of three quarter inch hose. Let's uh, put this thing through its paces. Let's check for leaks. Nozzle hand sprayer. So I put a typical multi nozzle hand sprayer on this thing. Alright, so if you do use a sprayer that has a handle that you squeeze, know this, this could happen. If you wind up the hose, that could happen. I don't view that as a design flaw. Just uh, heads up. So now, I can just pull out the hose as much as I need. Hopefully nobody runs over my hose. Oh. 
So yeah, just out of human nature, I was trying to use my hand without the winder thingy. I think the more you use this, the more you'll be accustomed to using it. No leaks, water's still on. Still on. No leaks. Maybe a lock, maybe a lock for the reel. Just for that reason there. I might get a bungee cord or something just to secure that. This will be great for pressure washing a house, I think. The spring or AC here as it comes on. So the only other thing I want to test out are these uh, wheels and axles. I think I might try to put this on maybe a mile long block. Let's see. Here's a uh, runaway driveway test. Right. I think it passes. Great carrying capacity. With these tires, it rolls pretty smooth. I'm impressed with the rolling action. Here's a good test. One hand with a big bump. Oh, yeah. About half a mile. It's hot out here. No problem. One handed. It will leave tracks. But that's not a complaint. Neighbor dogs. Half hour and half a mile. I was gonna do a mile, but it's too hot. I'll give it credit for the other half mile just because of the temperature. I'll say this, the heat index is 115. It's warm. So a debrief, do I think it's a good product? I do. Didn't leak. Once I got the hose reel wound up all the way, it didn't really fall out anymore and drag. It's not really a complaint of mine. No one's gonna be walking with this thing for a half mile. Shouldn't be, but I like it. Good job, Gorilla. I think that'll last my lifetime. Under normal use and circumstances, I think it'd be a good product. Tools I would recommend more than this. A knife to open the packaging. I'd use this again. It was useful. Small adjustable wrench, some needle nose, maybe longer ones. These are, I don't know, eight inch, definitely some needle nose. And I had a larger adjustable wrench in case I had any leaks, but I didn't, I didn't need it. Everything sealed up well. So those are the tools I'd recommend. If you have some neighbor dogs that'll assist you, that'd be great. Other than that, I'd recommend building this in the shade with a fan in front of you if it's the summertime. And don't take it for a half mile walk. One more thing, I wouldn't leave this outside. It'd be a quick grab for something like this, even in the backyard where people don't see it from the street. I'm gonna keep mine in the garage. It'd be a good item to grab, even to sell. 